Welcome to the NFL Week 6 Sunday Slate Player Props Breakdown, where Schwartz and I bring you player props from all of the Sunday games. Got a few picks for you here that we love, and pretty interesting slate overall. Go check out our Sunday Slate Breakdown for more talk about the spread, total for these games, and we're getting some player props. So Schwartz, going to let you take first stab at this one. Let's hear it. All right, we're going to focus mostly on a few games where I actually have a player props article. So if you want to see me dig farther into these picks and a few other from these games, uh, go check that out on the website. Except for this first one, we're going to get into something I've never done on this show before. We are going to do a mini same game parlay. We're going to, it's, just, it's just going to be two legs, but we're still going to get value of plus 284 on two legs. That should absolutely hit. This is only, I normally don't shout out any given sports book because the odds will move. And I encourage you guys always to go shop around. And you can for this one, but since it's a parlay, I'll tell you where I found it. Uh, this was on DraftKings. We're putting together two legs in the Saints-Texans game. It's going to be C.J. Stroud to sh- throw for over 224 and a half yards, as well as Stroud to throw an interception, which he has not done yet. He set an NFL rookie record starting his career with 180-something passes without throwing a pick. And credit to him. That's phenomenal, but... He's had turnover-worthy plays. He's had about one per game, so he's getting slightly lucky. And he should be throwing the football a lot. The Texans' offense is bottom three in most uh, rushing offense efficiency metrics, while the Saints are top three-ish in many of these same areas defensively by DPOA, EPA, etc. So this should be a Stroud day. The football should be in his hands, so I love him to get that volume. 224.5 is not a big number for a kid who's settled in and you know made 300-yard passing games look borderline routine early on in his career, even against a good defense, because I, I don't even know if they'll have like 10 or 15 rushing attempts. And they're not going to pull away from this one where Stroud's not forced to put the ball downfield. I think they I think they could win, but I, I don't think that this is going to be a run-the-clock-out type of game. And then in terms of that interception, I mean, it's a, it's a great run defense. It's a good pass defense. And with enough throws made for a, you know, a rookie who has been making some mistakes and getting away with them, he's got to throw that first interception sometimes, man. This guy's not going to go through 17 games and 600 pass attempts without throwing a pick or whatever, how many pass attempts he ends up with. So it's not a lock, but for two legs, the I think the yardage is almost a lock, by the way, 224 and a half. I actually saw it's going down like to 222, 223, but not hugely important, but get the best number you can. That side should be almost a lock. The interception should be coming. And at plus 284, you're almost getting three to one odds on a two leg parlay that looks pretty good both angles. So, this is my favorite one of the week. I'm going to throw on this one as soon as we get off of this call. Uh, I don't know. It's I, I'm not a huge player or SGP guy, but I like this one a lot. Well, now I'm in scramble mode, Schwartz, over here because CJ Stroud to throw an interception was one of my three picks. Um, I, I love the reasoning. The Saints, the Saints secondary is elite, maybe the best in the NFL right now. And yeah, CJ Stroud's been awesome, but. He's a rookie. He's going to throw a pick at some point. He's not going to go through the entire season without throwing one. In. It's not even, even just that he's a rookie. This could be this could be 2016 Tom Brady or 2021 Aaron Rodgers. And event and my take here would be you have to throw a freaking interception at some point. I mean, yeah. it's it's been what five games for him, and you just you just don't see these types of interception free streaks. I'm not saying that he's been totally lucky and like this isn't Jordan Love through the first couple of weeks. Stroud's playing awesome football, but he has got to get intercepted. It's going to happen. Yeah. Nope, I agree. Um, I know that you took my pick, but that's all right. We're going to keep it rolling. Uh, I'm going to go with Raheem Mostert, over 74 and a half rushing yards. The Dolphins host the Panthers here, and they're a 14-point favorite. So immediately, we're getting a, game, a great game script to emphasize the run for Miami. Um, their pass offense has been elite, and it's really just opened up the run game because you can't load the box against this team. You'll get burned over the top. And in addition to the great game script, they're going against the Panthers defense that ranks dead last in rushing defense, EPA, DVOA, and success rate. This run defense has been porous. Um, Derek Brown, their best defensive lineman, also might be out. So that's worth monitoring. But really, without Devon A-Chain, I think this is going to be Mostert's backfield. You might get a little style of an Ahmed out there, but I think Mostert is by far the most reliable guy. And with his speed, I mean, he could get most of this on one carry at some point in this game. I like his touchdown prop, too, currently sitting at minus 175. If you want to put that in some kind of a same-game parlay like Schwartz has talked about, don't mind that approach. But for our official pick, we're going Raheem Mostert over 74.5 rushing yards. Schwartz, you can go into your next one. 
Yeah, I like that one a lot, especially if there does end up being some inclement weather in South Florida. They're just going to – they. It's an amazing offense, and it is a terrible defense. So that's a great play. Let's get into a couple of picks uh, from one game that I have the player props article for. It is almost written, but it will be out on the internet by the time you guys get this video. It's Vikings Bears. I'm here in Chicago. It's raining right now. It might be raining over the weekend, but we are not worried because there are some good offenses hitting the field in this one and some really problematic defenses. This is my last game uh, weekend in Chicago. So we're going to get a little invested in the bears one last time, but we're also going to invest in the Vikings offense a little bit because Kirk Cousins is playing some of his best football. Justin Jefferson will not be available. He is on the IR now and there's speculation. He's played his last game at the Vi as a Viking. And if that's the case, that's sad, but they might be okay. Cause they've got this kid. Uh, we're going to be talking about Jordan Addison, Boletnikoff winner in college. Absolutely great start to his career so far. The number that for his yardage right now is 53 and a half and you get minus 110 on either side of that. So that's like a push. Um, I mean, what else can I say? This Bears pass defense is terrible. Wayne and I spent hundreds of dollars to go sit and watch it in person and just weren't, I, I was not impressed for a single snap of an, a game where both sides were passing the whole time. So it is, uh, we could pull out the metrics. I actually don't have them written down, but the Bears pass defense is bad. If you watch football in any capacity, you'd know it. And Addison's the wideout number one. We know Kirk loves his top wideouts. Uh, he's he's had great connections with Thielen uh, in the past. JJ now. It's a great situation uh, for Addison to get a whole bunch of targets. And 53 and a half is not a big number. This Bears defense has no ability to stop the big play. So, heck, you could get this on two catches, even three. So, absolutely love Addison there. On the other side of the football, you have another defense that gives up home runs. The Vikings pass defense. And, I mean, if we know one thing that Justin Fields could do, well, let's hit the deep ball. Last year, he was averaging, like, eight completions at, like, 20 yards to start each to start the year. And this year, as the Bears' offense has opened up a bit more, we've been seeing him hit those deep strikes again, especially to DJ Moore. Over 23 and a half yards for DJ's longest reception. Absolutely awesome play. It's at minus 130, but I still love it. This dude is physical. He'll catch it downfield, or he'll take it for some yards after the catch. He is proving why the Bears invested in him this offseason. It's just awesome to see. And the other one, we're going to do a half unit on each of these. Darnell Mooney, he's not having the year, obviously, that DJ is. He had a tough one against the Commanders, although he had his opportunities. It just, it just came this close to linking up. And his number's a little lower at 17 and a half. I love it because he's not going to get the target share that uh, DJ is, but most of his looks are going to be downfield. He's a fast guy. He's stretching the field. This is his purpose to tear bad, you know, secondaries for long gainers. So if he's not doing that, why have him on the roster? And if he can't do it against the Vikings, when is he going to? And then lastly, Justin over 195 and a half passing yards. I don't think the market has caught up to the new Justin Fields where he's passed first and not terrible at it. He's still using his physicality and his body to get these passing lanes open, but we're not seeing Justin Fields take off and running, which I have mixed feelings about. But as far as these statistics getting to 200 yards in a game where the Bears should be throwing all along, he's finally being used properly. It's against a poor pass defense where his big downfield threats have chances to make plays downfield. Justin Fields, over 195 and a half yards, coming off of a two-game stretch where he's averaging over 300. Let's do it. Yeah, I like that Fields picked the mess out of this. Um, I'm going to wait and see what the weather situation is on Sunday. And just a heads up to everybody, there's inclement weather in a lot of these games, so... Pay attention to that before you bet on player props. Um, keep in mind that the rain uh, is less of a factor than the wind for the passing game. Um, wind is potentially like going to impact these games, though. So that being said, I do like the Justin Fields pick. He's been over that number in four to five games this season, and the Vikings have allowed a 76% completion rate, which is the fourth highest through five games in the Super Bowl era. They are historically bad against the pass right now. So I like that one. Going to move over to London little London action for your early morning. And I love Zay Flowers. Schwartz loves Zay Flowers. Everybody loves Zay Flowers, man. And I think this is a pretty good spot for him. Over 56 and a half receiving yards. One thing I really liked seeing last week is his average depth of target was 16.7 yards. Highest of the season so far. First few weeks, he was really used as an underneath receiver, even behind the line of scrimmage. And kind of an extension of a struggling rushing offense. But they're opening up the offense more, pushing the ball downfield. And... Just last week, he had four targets of 20-plus yards downfield. You look at the matchup here, Tennessee is ranked 28th in pass defense success rate. 
They're allowing 10th most passing yards per game. Have allowed some pretty big performances to wide receiver ones this season. Josh Downs popped off against them for, I think, like close to 100 yards last week. Zay Flowers is a super talented receiver. He's a top target in this offense, not named Mark Andrews. And yeah, I think he's going to have a big game here. He's been 50 plus, 56 plus receiving yards in four out of five, his five games so far. So love this opportunity for him to hit the over. Schwartz, any Zay thoughts from you? Yeah, absolutely. This is an awesome bounce back opportunity. I say bounce back. He had his second highest yardage of the season, but you watch. I don't think he had a particularly great game. He had 11 targets, five catches, and... We're starting to get into this point for Zay where you can have a rough day and still put up 73 yards. And I think that succeeding on your off days is the mark of a star. I mean, we talk about it in basketball a lot more, but he's become like a find-away player. That was his highest target share he's had yet. Everything's trending in the right direction for Zay. Now that you bring him up, I haven't looked at the number, but I would love to know what his anytime touchdown scorer is. I, I can't imagine that there's anyone in this league who's more due for a touchdown than Zay. He still doesn't have one in his young NFL career through five games. So... If that's anywhere in the plus, I'd be thinking about that number two. Yeah, you can get it currently. Num- best number is plus 190 on FanDuel. Yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty sweet. So, I mean, he, he's, yeah, he's got to get involved at some point. Yeah. All right, you want to get your next pick? Yeah, uh, I'll do another couple of picks from another game for which I have the article. I don't know if I mentioned I, Oh, yeah, I do. I did mention I have the Bears one. I have the article for players, props for Cardinals, Rams. Very, very interesting game. It's also my uh, play of the week for the uh, Sunday slate is a full game number in this game. So go check out that video and I'll write up. But for the player props, one of the ones we're going to invest in is Matt Stafford over 277 and a half passing yards. It's a little bit of a high number, but he's been over 303 times this year in five appearances. Came within just a couple of yards of hitting this number in a weird one, a weird game against the Bengals. So he was like one throw away and he had just one miss in terms of this bet. Uh, in which you would have actually said, wow, that was a bad bet. That was against the Eagles, who are good. The Eagles are good. I don't know if this is a particularly hot take. but uh, of, course that's, of course, that's the one where I bet him last week. But yeah. Keep going. <laughs> there you go. Stafford this year, he has 14 big-time throws. That is best in the NFL, and it's the best by a good amount. Uh, second place is a, a couple of guys with 11. So he's separated a lot in that uh, in that area. Playing good football, even if it's not really showing up on the stat sheet where he's got five touchdowns and five picks. But getting Cooper cut back is not going to hurt him in terms of getting more yardage, converting these big-time throws into big-time gainers. So absolutely love the situation for him, uh, especially with the matchup with the Cardinals, who have a pretty rough pass. I mean, this has been a plucky team this year, but they were considered to be a Caleb contender for a reason. And it's that their defense sucks and it really has been bad as much better as the offense has been than expected. So Stafford should have chances, but based on that improved uh, Cardinals offense or not improved, but better than expected Cardinals offense against a mediocre Rams defense, uh, the Cardinals should be scoring enough to keep this competitive and Stafford throwing most of the football game, which brings me to my next point. Uh, You didn't think I was going to get out of this video without a single defense and special teams prop. Here we are. I don't have tackler props yet, and I want tackler props for this game because, man, secondaries are going to have a field day bringing down receivers downfield for this one. So if you're watching this on Sunday, go look for like some safety and cornerback tackle props. And if you're seeing anything for a major contributor at two and a half or three and a half, just go over. Even four and a half for safeties who get heavily involved. But what we're going to do here is Brett Maher over two and a half extra points made at plus 100 odds, even money essentially for the Rams to score three touchdowns and not need two-point conversions. The Rams' red zone percentage is, uh, sorry, drives that they score a touchdown on as a percentage of their red zone drives is 64.29. That is the sixth best figure in the NFL, despite having played the Niners and the Eagles. It's 75% at home, coming off a two-for-two appearance against the Eagles. And Cooper Cup coming back is not bad for turning moving the ball into scoring the ball. He didn't score in his first game, but I don't need to go into a whole bit about what a technician Cooper Cup is in short spaces. So We got a little mind melt going right now because I'm just going to jump in right there. This is my final pick is Cooper Cup anytime touchdown. <laughs> um, Beautiful. I think I think he scores this week. And you, you talked about this over extensively. I agree with you. I think it's going to be a high-scoring game. I bet the Rams team total over 27 and a half. I think their offense is going to hum in this matchup. And you're getting Cooper Cup pretty close to even money to score a touchdown, which was not the case when he was at his peak of his powers. Um, and I, I think I thought he looked awesome last week. Eight catches for 118 yards, um, 12 targets, and 
obviously his last fully healthy season, 16 touchdowns in 17 games. I'm not saying he's at that level right now, but didn't seem that far off last week. And this is definitely a matchup that's going to have a lot of points. So I love Cooper Cup to find the end zone here. Anything close to even money, currently like minus 120 on FanDuel, so that I'll go with that as my bet here. But yeah, no, uh, definitely agree with that one. I'm not saying Coop will necessarily be the guy to make this go to three touchdowns, but just him being there is going to open stuff up for that Rams offense in the short spaces. He either is going to score a touchdown or command a lot of attention because if you don't give him a lot of attention, he's in. He looked ready and back. And as far as Mar hitting these looks, um, 10 out of 10 so far on the year, 50 of 53, most attempted in the whole league last year. So, uh, he, I mean, he's a veteran kicker. He should hit his extra points. And if you don't see the Rams scoring a touchdown per quarter in this one, just go ahead and bet the Cardinals. Uh, they should be getting after it offensively in this one. And honestly, I think it's going to be a really fun football game. The Cardinals have been weirdly plucky this year, and they have a tough enough schedule that they might still come close to one of those top picks. But this is not a free football game, and the Rams should be forced to score touchdowns the whole game long. I'm just hoping it's not so close and that the math doesn't work out so that they're thinking about two-point conversions, but I don't really see yeah. it. Yeah, and I'll just say, too, if you're a fan of making same-game parlays, this seems like a great opportunity to do that. Um, something along, I didn't pull this up. I didn't make this, so I, I couldn't tell you what the odds are right now, but something like Rams money line, team total over, and then Cooper Cup, 100-plus yards and a touchdown, I feel like that's pretty good value. Um, I could pull the odds up for that real quick, but Schwartz, do you have any other thoughts on this game while I do that super quickly? Uh, thoughts on that game. I mean, absolutely hammer the over. I have, I mean, as far as another prop, I have, I do have the article for player props for this game. Get Coop over seven and a half, as well as that touchdown. It's plus one Oh five for Cooper cup to get eight catches. He hit that number last week as he worked himself back into the offense. Does not seem like Puka has really stolen his role and Stafford was able to distribute to both of them, even on a non-prolific day. Stafford, I think only threw for two twenty yards or something like that. And I don't know. This number might be a little low because people think the Rams will run away and stop throwing the ball, but I don't think their defense is going to establish to doing that. Uh, establish eh, Their defense is not going to allow them to do that. So this is a low number. Grab it while you can. Just like that Wayne was saying about Coop being at the height of his powers and the lines that you were seeing for him then, get over seven and a half while you can because once he re-establishes himself in this offense and as one of the preeminent receiving threats in the, the league, it ain't happening. You're not going to see plus money for Cooper Cup to get eight catches when he's... Uh, been in a bit of a groove so absolutely love this value just grab it while you can yeah i appreciate you uh trying to stall there I, I couldn't pull it up in time but definitely recommend checking out that same game probably opportunity um we'll hit a quick recap and then we'll get out of here uh schwartz uh give us your official bets for this card Ooh, there's a handful here we're gonna go for the vikings bears game jordan addison over 53 and a half DJ Moore, longest reception over 23 and a half. Darnell Mooney, longest reception over 17 and a half. Justin Fields, over 195 and a half. I implore you all to check the weather report before punching those in. I'm guessing you will see this closer to the day of than we are. Uh, for the Cardinals Rams game, Stafford over 277 and a half yards. Marr over two and a half extra points made. And then lastly, for the Saints Texans game, we're going to do that same game parley at plus 284 odds, but I'm sure you'll get something slightly different by the time this hits. Uh, over 224 and a half yards or whatever you can find for CJ Stroud passing yards. And then CJ to throw his first interception of his NFL career. It's a little two leg parlay for around plus 284 odds. Yep. I have four official picks for this video. I'm also on CJ Stroud to throw an interception plus 125 on DraftKings. I like Raheem Mostert over 74 and a half rushing yards. Cooper Cup anytime touchdown score and Zay Flowers over 56 and a half receiving yards. So, That'll do it for me. Anything else, Schwartz? Yeah, I've been I've been trying to stall and look for the stat the entire video. If you want to get involved with that Zay Flowers uh, to score a touchdown, he leads the NFL. Leads the NFL in catches without a touchdown this season. So, yeah. I mean, if, if your takeaway from that is that Zay Flowers is unable to buy, find the end zone, I don't have a clever analogy. You're wrong. The, the fact is that he's due. London is calling for Zay Flowers and it's calling for him in the end zone. So that'll do it for us. I hope you guys enjoy these games. Should be another great Sunday of NFL football. Check out the rest of our videos. Got our Sunday slate videos up. Well, Sunday Night Football, Monday Night Football, got player props for those if that's what you're into. And that'll do it for us. Thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe and enjoy the games.